Hi and welcome to this uh, best plugins for MIDI guitar in 2023. I've been doing these once a year for some time now and I'm going to change things up a little by doing this with a focus on MPE instruments. It's not going to be only MPE instruments and it's also going to include some audio effects actually. We'll begin with the standard MIDI one instruments in something like a jazz setting. Here's trumpet and piano to begin with and then there's a saxophone that I like you to hear. So these examples are not obviously MPE. I mean the saxophone in the end it's an MPE enabled instrument in some way but it's it's a monophonic instrument so I wouldn't say that the MPE character really comes through. And especially so with the instruments in the beginning you saw that it was in a contact container and contact is not primarily associated with MPE right now. But in the next clip I'm actually using a native instrument valves which is basically the same setup but I'm using it in an MPE wrapper so I'm getting it to behave like an MPE instrument which gives it a lot more character. I have two instruments layered I have a steel string guitar and I have these uh, valves making up the first part recorded to video and then I'm playing over that with the same trumpet that you just heard but now it's a flugelhorn instead. The steel string you just heard is an instrument that comes from Jue that makes these little wonderful MP controllers. Uh, it's played in UVI either Falcon or the workstation and I played this together with this native instruments valves now an MP instrument. Everything becomes much more organic this way. So in the next clip I just want to show you a synth that isn't new for 2023 in any way but it's still one of the best polyphonic synths with polyphonic bends and it works so well for MIDI guitar right out of the box. So here's Yuhi's Diva together with a swam sax. Now that we've entered the realm of the synths, I would like to point to uh, GeForce that makes these software versions of uh, great analog synths. Uh, you have all the Oppenheim synths and, and stuff like this, but I'm gonna showcase here a, the GeForce 
Mini Monster, it's some uh, gated super sweeper preset. Uh, obviously, I'm way too lazy to do this properly, but I guess you know what it is. For the next two clips I have GeForce instruments as well. I have first it's the GeForce Mini Monster and in the other clip it's GeForce Oddity 3. I have them layered so I have them on a expression pedal and I'm soloing with a breath controlled patch in Serum in both cases. <music> Next is the Ample Sound TR6. It's the Paddy Tucci bass from Ample Sounds. It's a six string bass and me growing up was a huge uh, Shikoria electric band fan. So this is something that immediately resonated with me and it actually played like a dream. <laughs> There's a lot to be said also for those instruments that aren't really MP instruments to begin with. I have these pianos that I like, the native instruments, Noir for instance, and of course the Ravenscroft 275 uh, that I always use in uh, UVI's Falcon. Getting a piano to come alive playing a guitar controller, you probably need something extra. Bare minimum is a sustain pedal for sustain on CC64 or on the Sustenudo for uh, CC66, I would think. In the first clip, I'm using the arpeggiator from Jamorgi's MIDI Guitar 2. And in the second clip, I'm using the reboard in Ableton. <laughs> Let's enter the world of audio effects for a while. I'm gonna showcase some of the best effects that I've come across this year. And... clip you have the pitch pedal from Guitar Rig 7 that I'm going to come back to uh, just connected to a pedal so I could control it in real time. Second clip was obviously the Neural Disk piece Tom Morello setup and I can connect however many pedals I want and control a lot of things in real time in that as well and it's incredibly inspiring setup for me to work with. I really love Tom Morello and say Werner Reed and that kind of stuff. In the third 
most experimental uh, setup, I think. You had a synth from Equator acting as a guitar and Arturia's EFX fragments effect. We're gonna take things down a notch in intensity here, but we're coming back to guitar for another effect. In the next clip, I'm using the impulse response loader and it changes the tone up uh, totally, I think. It's the Swam violin on top, but I also have Arturia's augmented strings to play over using a hold on and off effect with a sustain pedal to that. So for the next two clips, uh, I'm going to be working with organ tech. You probably know of Modarch Piano Tech, the one with the acoustic nylon guitar nowadays. In the first clip, I'll be working with the soft nylon, not the piano tech nylon, but the soft nylon and organ tech together in some sort of piece. But in the second clip, I'm playing this organ in three levels. So I'm using a triple pedal controlling each organ with one pedal. So actually when I'm stepping on the pedal, I'm getting a held note on that to play over and uh, you'll see the effect. It's, it's kind of interesting actually. So now over to one of the most inspiring releases of this year, for me at least, uh, Reason's Object. These sounds sort of remind me of what I heard out of the Osmos in the beginning. Object, we're obviously halfway into the Mad Hatter land of the crazy soundscaping, but this isn't MPE yet. The way I was able to control that is due to the fact that I could send my actual audio in and had it modeled in a way that isn't from MIDI really. Now we're getting into MPE country instead for the first time for real. Modus from physical audio is also one of those things that when I found this, I thought, oh wow, this is really, really interesting. But I had my objections because of the way that they had interpreted the MPE protocol. It wasn't reassignable in any way. So the only way I could use MPE to begin with was according to their way of assigning it and I wasn't really happy with that. But kudos to the guys at Physical Audio. They uh, came out with an update and made it possible for us to more precisely define what kind of gestures had what kind of effect. I don't know what to call it but I have a cello from Expressive E and it's their Arche cello. I have some sort of bellish effect and that's also from an Expressive E uh, synth, it's Imagine, and then we have some sort of big metal plates shaking and thunderstorm and rattles and stuff, and that's from Modus. <laughs>
if that was experimental enough for you, uh, the next will be even more so perhaps, but it's not sounding as severe, I guess. Uh, I've used the augmented orchestra in Falcon and I used it because I can make any instrument inside Falcon into an MPE instrument nowadays. I'll just go in and change this particular setting, which is a script. It only takes a second for me to magically turn any sort of instrument into an MPE instrument. And why would I want to do that? I can modulate, I can attach external modulators to that if I want to. Here I added external modulation to three of the notes. So whenever I'm playing these notes, they are going to be in constant flux or in constant change. It sounds horribly complex, but it isn't really. Uh, so just listen for the effect that it has in this short little clip. that wasn't enough, I can actually use some sort of software that I came across also this year. Sonic Labs Oceanic. Uh, it's a software bundle that captures the essence of the ocean's waves and transforms them into a symphony of additive sound synthesis. In the same way as with the previous patch, the information on how the pitches are going to react are coming in from outside that's decided from this external uh, little software bundle. Brilliant. So uh, why stop here already? I have two instances of Equator 2, but in two different settings. So for the first setting, I have it inside Entonal Studios and I'm retuning it the whole setup. So it will play in a different scale. The other instance of Equator, I've opened inside Fluid Chords, which allows me to define particular notes as full-on chords and also how they should behave going into each other. I also use a slide obviously in, in this uh, clip. The possibilities with MPE are really endless I would say. For me, MIDI guitar really shines in this bending into notes and phrasing, a formation of, of word-like sentences musically that is the interesting part. You can really express yourself with software instruments in a way I never thought was possible just two, three years ago. And with the MPE instruments today, I didn't even see that coming actually. Didn't dare dream this big. so. Uh, I'm so happy to be part of this journey right now uh, and I hope you are too. Before we call it a day, some honorable mentions. The Arturia Suite has a lot of synths that has MPE support that works really, really well. I mean, the CS80 is marvelous and I use it all the time. We shouldn't forget the uh, Synapse. Dune 3.6 is out and it has both MPE and MTS ESP support, which is a microtonal tuning protocol that you can send 
externally to a lot of different synths at the same time, which is a great idea. Divisimate also has MPE support since it's 1.3 version. Uh, and it is a orchestration tool, so you open up a big orchestra and you perhaps choose sections of, of that orchestra and switch easily between scenes with their software. I've used uh, Divisimate together with the full SWAM orchestra before. But uh, SWAM has also released its sections. It really has great potential. And if the audio modeling guys deliver on their full MPE commitment, also with polyphonic bands, it surely will be a part of my future setup. You made it all the way here, congrats to that. And if there's something that you think should be mentioned in say a future version of this, uh, please let me know in the comment section. I love to hear about the new stuff, about the new MPE stuff especially, since that's my main focus. And I hope this has been somewhat useful to you or at least somewhat interesting. And uh, I guess I'll see you later, so for now, Bye.